I'd like to introduce Professor Jean Hertzberg from the Department of Mechanical Engineering at the University of Colorado, who is not as dangerous as she looks right now holding that Vortex gun, something we'll get back to. So we've been talking a lot about ODEs in this MOOC on nonlinear dynamics. They're great models for some kinds of systems, like pendulums and simple harmonic oscillators, but not for other kinds of systems, like the kinds of systems that you're interested in, Gene. I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about one of these systems, like the one that you're holding in your hand. What's cool about it, and why ODEs aren't the right way to describe it? Well. So as you can see, what I'm uh, playing with here is uh, vortex rings. This is just a little vortex ring blaster. And it generates uh, these rings. And as you can see, they are very three-dimensional. And they're changing with time. So that means if we're going to describe the fluid flow, gases, liquids, any kind of fluid flow, you have to take all of these uh, degrees of freedom, basically, into account. And that means you need a partial differential equation. The governing equations of fluids are fully three-dimensional and time-dependent. The DE in PDE is like the DE in ODE, but they're really different animals. A PDE is a differential equation in the sense that it's about how things change, but it's partial rather than ordinary. Is that just what you call them when they have more than one independent variable? Because you have to take partial derivatives. Aha. So a partial derivative is a derivative that doesn't pay attention to the other variables. Right. So you're taking a regular derivative uh, with respect to one variable at a time, but the others are just riding along. Uh -huh. But that makes it a partial derivative. You're not doing the whole thing all at once. Professor Hertzberg teaches a wonderful course on the art and science of fluid flow. And behind her on the wall is a collection of photographs from that course. Here's the website for Professor Hertzberg's course that I just mentioned. Maybe I can get her to say a little bit about it. So when I was a graduate student, I uh, started working in fluid mechanics. I was interested in fluid mechanics, but then I started playing with lasers and fogs and found out that it was just awesome. And I, I realized now, looking back, that a lot of my motivation in my studies of fluid mechanics for, you know, real engineering purposes, but still a lot of my motivation was how gorgeous this stuff is. It's aesthetic. And I feel like I've come out of the closet when I say I do this because I love the way it looks. <laughs> so I just want people to acknowledge that that's a valid motivation for actually doing real science and engineering. And I just want to encourage you all to do that. So yeah, let's go to the galleries now. So I teach this class to mixed teams of engineers and fine art photography and video students. And I've been teaching it for about 10 years now. Um, let's go to, uh, yeah, let's go to this one, which is the most recent one that I have posted. So let's click on this one as an example. This is a, uh, a dye used, a fluorescent dye, actually, that you inject into your motor oil if you're trying to find a leak on your engine block. But here, the student took the dye into a syringe and injected it into a clear mineral oil. And whenever you've got uh, um, a suddenly started jet or a certain type of jet coming out of a uh, um, uh, narrow orifice like that, you're going to get these vortex rings. So because the dye is slightly transparent, you can see these rings layering up, and it's just amazing to look at. How's this related to the vortex rings that we were looking at from your vortex gun? The, the physics are very similar, actually. Okay. Let's look at one or two more. Okay. So this is, uh, this is flow of granular material. It obeys the same kind of physics as other types of, of fluid flows, although we're really looking at a suspension of uh, particles um, in air. So it's, it's kind of a fluid suspension. So this is called the tectonic basin. Um, it's used, uh, similar devices are used for studying, for example, the liquefaction of the ground under San Francisco during an earthquake. Uh, but it's just amazing to look at and play with. 
And so, you know, there's a lot of these uh, examples in fluid mechanics that are, you know, really viscerally satisfying and scientifically quite important as well. Well, thank you very much for telling us about this. My pleasure.